not all that unlike Eric Collins, who just needed to release energy from his body because of a sweet Miles Bridges dunk. Doug Branson needs to release a stat that he found. He's sitting on it. I'm sure it's going to be tasty. What kind of hot stat do you have for us today, Doug? I don't know if it's hot, but it is very ilu- it's very illuminating. Okay. Uh, it, the the warm light of facts uh, that really show you some of the problems <laughs> that the Hornets that have doesn't had have the this- same ring as hot to it. Illuminating because of its factual evidence. Yeah, mm-hmm. that may, maybe maybe nope, this be stat a hot is stat. like nope. This stat is like a warm hug of <laughs> factual information. Uh, all right, let me throw it up on the screen here. So this is from Twitter. The Tweeter is Tom Bassine at TV Bassine on Twitter. This is uh, updated team performance by quarter. Who owns each quarter? This is net rating by quarter, and the source is NBA.com forward slash stats. And you can see the Charlotte Hornets. I don't know if you can see. I might have to zoom in here for the YouTube. That's okay. Um, The Charlotte Hornets are minus 6.6 in the first quarter. My, this, so this is net rating, minus 0.1 in the second quarter, hmm. 6.0 positive net rating in the third quarter, and then a 2.0 net rating in the fourth quarter. So, um, Walker, this shows us a lot of what we've been seeing this season. Just awful starts from the team that have been difficult uh, for them to overcome. Yeah, and I think I was saying this in the first segment. A lot of that was early on, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I don't think they've dug themselves in in quite the holes here as frequently as they did like early on, where they didn't win their first first quarter until Golden State on ESPN. I think it was like the ninth game of the season, and then they proceeded to then get destroyed by Golden State in that one. At least they got revenge and beat them later on. But the fourth quarter is most fascinating to me, even with the best net rating being that third quarter for Charlotte, because this has been a team that the last two years have been extremely good in the clutch. At the beginning of the season, it wasn't really the case. They weren't the worst team in the NBA, but they were like top 15, top 17, right? They were kind of middle of the road. They started to figure that out a little bit. You know, they beat Philadelphia. They beat Boston, a couple of close contests. They beat the Lakers the other night, even though it wasn't great coaching or playing at the end of the Mm -hmm. the fourth quarter. They still were able to hold on. You know, it, it, but th- they're not quite to the level that they were the last couple of years, and it's why you see the point differential consistently be in the negatives, yet they're higher than what in the standings than what their point differential uh, should normally indicate for other teams. Well, let's look at some teams that have good point differentials in the first quarter, okay? It's Cleveland, it's Dallas, uh, Denver's okay, they're pretty good, Memphis is good, Miami is great, Milwaukee is great, Uh, The Phoenix Suns are great. And you can see, too, teams that don't have a severe letdown really throughout the game are your elite teams in the NBA. It's the Phoenixes, it's the Utahs, it's Memphis, it's Miami. It's I mean, Cleveland has a problem closing, but they're so damn good in the first quarter. And that's all. I think that all speaks to uh, your starting lineup. You know, can you both defend and play offense? The Hornets struggle to defend because they don't have a defensive rim protector anchor underneath. And it also speaks to maturity. Can you come out with the right attitude? Can you start games well? Uh, and it's so like the discrepancy between the, these numbers in the first quarter. When the Hornets win, they play well, they play significantly well in the first quarter. When they lose, they play significantly poorly. Like the discrepancy is huge. And and they've they've really have to get it figured out. I mean, I think this really highlights for me the reason why, despite you know missing players, despite some some issues with maturity, that I think the lineup issue, the fact that you know that you've got Mason Plumley there and you need something better, I think is the number one issue, and they have to address it at the trade deadline. Any problem? Any fear about this continuing to be a problem with Miles Bridges getting a second tech in as many games? Well, I, I think it is a problem. Yeah. I mean, in this one, it wasn't as, um, you know, kind of time and situation devastating as it was against uh, the Lakers. This one, they were a little bit further out. Um, but I think just the general frustration that you're seeing from Miles and from PJ, uh, I think, is is something they really have to figure out. Something doesn't seem quite right with this team right now and I'm I'm not I'm not certain what it is but I just don't they're not having a ton of fun out there even when they're winning games against the Lakers so um, you know I think it's 
you know, David Walker says like they need the All Star break, and and that may be the case. They oh, that's may always need... said about this team every single year. I know it's, it's it. a little bit of a cliche, <laughs> but I mean something seems funky right now, um, and, and maybe they do need some time off. Yeah, I, I will say the the six point plus for them net rating when you talk about the third quarter. I mean, it, it all kind of makes sense, right? The eye test the eye test does match up with what we're seeing in this stat. And you do see Charlotte start to dig themselves out. It's honestly really indicative of what we saw in the fourth on opening night against Indiana. You know, that game was the blueprint to what was going to take place the rest of the season. I, Bad first quarter, come yeah. out, guns a blaze in third, find a way to hold on and eventually make the right plays in the fourth. That's what you get the rest of the year. Well, here's my take on this. I'd much rather be the Cleveland Cavaliers. I would much rather have a closing problem than a starting problem. Yeah. Because I think a closing problem is tactical. You know, it's it's who the coach is throwing out there at the end of games, and and it's really going going to change game to game. Uh, and you know, and it's it's a lot about clutch shooting. But I think it's fixable. Uh, you know, starters, your starters not being right and not coming out with the right mentality. That's going to be a little bit more difficult to fix, and and the Hornets have a tough challenge ahead of them for sure to turn those One's, numbers around. One seems more predicated on luck a little bit too. Well, so, yeah, I, I mentioned just real quickly. I mentioned the teams that are elite at uh, starting games. Let me also mention the teams that the Hornets find themselves in the same company as, and I think this is illuminating too. So the Charlotte Hornets at minus six point six. They do, they join Detroit at minus fourteen, Houston Ouch. at minus nine. The Clippers don't start game well. Don't start games well. They're at minus five point three. The Pelicans, the Knicks, the Thunder, the Magic. Do, are you noticing a trend? Yes, I am. As I, I am. use the same inflection in my voice to <laughs> illustrate that all of these teams are either struggling or are bottom dwellers and the Hornets are in that same company and they shouldn't be. It's a weird team, right? Because also they're good in the third quarter. And I saw one of the more ridiculous numbers on that sheet was Golden State had a plus 17. <laughs> well, it's great quarter. because that first half one. it's four point positive 4.6 and 1.2. So it's like they let you hang around, they let you hang around yeah. and then they just annihilate you in the third quarter. Yeah, turn on the switch, baby. That's what happens with Charlotte. <laughs> they're talented enough to do that. All right, thanks uh, for making Locked On Hornets it's your first listen every day. Make sure you join us tomorrow. We'll continue to talk about the Hornets again because we have uh, a couple of days before we get this next game against the Celtics. That's going to take place on Wednesday, tip at 730. Make your second listen, Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. Check us out on YouTube. Have a great, uh, great day. We'll be back with you tomorrow.